Okay, so I've been away for a while and I haven't done any videos for quite some time, but I'm back and I figured a good place to start would be with some remixing, because that's all I've been doing recently. It's just remixing tracks. Uh, I've been doing it using the Octatrack, I've been doing it using um, UVI Falcon in Ableton Live as well. Um, and obviously the Digitact is providing some beats a lot of the time. Um, it's been a lot of fun, um, <clears throat> but I've already, I've done a remix of uh, Guns N' Roses track, but I wasn't very happy with what I did, so I've set up some samples here, and I figured I'd just sort of fuck around with it um, live on video and see if I come up with anything. Um, so I've got these two samples here, let's have a listen to them. So that's that one. Uh, the next one, that one's turned down a little bit, so I'm just going to turn it up to 11, which is where I sort of usually turn things up to. So that one's a bit shorter, um, but you know, we've all heard this track, classic killer Guns N' Roses track, um, sort of <laughs> kind of cheesy band that I unashamedly enjoy from time to time. Um, and if we go just real quick into my sample uh, library, I suppose, um, <clears throat> I've got a bunch of stuff in here from previous remixes. So I've got a bunch of Nicki Minaj stuff in here. So I, I did a pretty fucking rad remix of that track. Um, Got a Drake sample in here, which um, I actually did do a pretty sweet remix of as well. Got some Queen. Got a lot of stuff. Um, so, anyway, I, I'm working on a remix album. I got heaps of fucking tracks for that, sort of been preparing that for quite a long time. Uh, some of those remixes go back, shit, like two years now, so maybe more. Um, so anyway, today let's focus on this Guns N' Roses track. So what I've got here, <clears throat> what I've set up, I'm just going to sort of delete some trigs, uh, which I set up so I can go through it with you guys. Um, so if I play this, um, it's obviously a lot slower. I've got it set to 82 BPM. And you can notice that there's a little slight gap before it loops around. And the thing is, is that it automatically set this to a four bar loop. Um, the Octatrack detected that it was four bars, uh, figured out the tempo from that and it, and it looped around, but it wasn't quite right. Like didn't the loop didn't end in the right way. So I had to adjust the original tempo and make it slightly less than four bars for it to sound correct. Um, which is just something you have to do from time to time. Um, like when I remix tracks, I'll I'll make the loops in live. I'll beef them up a little bit with some plugins just so that they're at a decent volume and stuff. And then I'll bring them into the octa track. And even with fucking with them in live so that they're sort of the right length and stuff, I still find that they don't loop correctly a lot of the time because where I choose to loop sections is sometimes a little bit arbitrary. Doesn't always fall on like the downbeat of the beginning of the bar necessarily because the vocal starts a little bit earlier or whatever. Um, in this case, I felt like I did loop it almost exactly, but like still required a little bit of tweaking. So anyway, I got that. So there's a little gap. And what I did to fix that little gap um, is something that I do sometimes. And that's, uh, I inserted a trig here. Um, and I press function um, on it twice, which makes it into a triggerless trig, um, which just means it doesn't re-trig the sample. It just means you can put um, <clears throat> parameter locks on it. Um, and what I did is I changed the rate down to 12. And normally the rate by default is set to pitch, um, which means it would, when it hit that bit, it would just immediately pitch down to some ridiculously low note but you can make it so that the rate does time stretch instead, which is what I did. Um, 
and it sounds like this now. So you get that note just stretched out in a really satisfying way. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, just because it's something that I do a lot, is just uh, I'll often just forego this delay and replace it with a compressor. Because <clears throat> often when I uh, record these tracks into the computer, you know, I've got access to heaps of delay plugins. I don't need the delay on the Octatrack necessarily. Sometimes I use it, and the best place for the delay on the Octatrack I find is in making really glitchy, weird stuff, especially with the scenes. Um, <clears throat> because you can control so many of the parameters, like you can control the timing, which gives you that really stretched, like um, pitched delay sort of sounds, really bouncy kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, you can just get some fucking rad results, but I often find I don't necessarily use it just for delays, you know, like standard delays sort of stuff. So the great thing about the compressor, as I've talked about before on my other videos on the off track, is this. So you can basically use it as a distortion unit if you want. Um, when I first got the Octatrack, I didn't really realize, I didn't really quite know how to use the compressor on this, but I've obviously since figured it out. And a little bit of light compression. <laughs> Bring up the rate to like half, roughly. Turn down the, the threshold just a little, just a little bit. And I just find those settings really, like they boost the signal without distorting it. If you want to distort it, um, you can obviously, as I just, uh, just demonstrated, you can just turn the rate right down and like just the gain right up and it kind of acts like a bit of a limiter. Like it never, it does, like it gets louder, but it hits a brick wall and it just starts to distort at some point. And so you don't really, you're maxing out the, uh, like the outputs, um, the internal outputs on the Octatrack, but when they come out of the stereo output, um, the main outs, they're not like in the red or anything. It's just the internal sort of digital um, peaking, which gives you that sort of epic, uh, you know, distortion. I guess so it's like internal gain staging. Um, so anyway, got that compressor nicely set. Um, and it, like from this point, like, what do I do? There's like a million things I could do. Um, and I find it's often fun just to sort of fuck with parameter locks, um, and get some interesting stuff going. Um, I sometimes maybe want to chop the sample up. So what I'm going to do, cause I quite like what I've got there already. I'm just going to copy this track and I'm going to bring it down here and paste it there. And I'm going to mute this one. And I'm, this is my, my track that I'm going to start fucking with so that I don't like lose anything. Um, the only problem with that um, is that I want to slice this up. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to, if I don't want the other one to be sliced up, I'm going to have to make a new, um, what do you call it? A new instance of the sample in my uh, pool, my audio pool. So I'm just going to copy that slot. I'm just going to bring it down here and paste it. And I'm going to select that and that's going to be my new sample slot. It's the same sample. It's just loaded in again so that I can do other stuff with it. So now I'm going to uh, slice. I'll probably slice it into shit. Hmm. I reckon 16 pieces. I pretty much always select no because I like things to be just rigidly on the grid. Sometimes it helps to do yes um, in that option, uh, especially if you're chopping up like a beat and you want it to be exactly on um, the transients. So now I've got these slices, uh, which now I have to in my, I have to bring in these.
and now this one here, um, it's going to have to become a proper trig now, which is okay. Like that's fine. Um, because it will be triggering the slice. Whereas if it, if it had been left as a trig on the original sample, which wasn't sliced, it would just start from the beginning of the entire sample. Whereas now it's going to start from the beginning of the slice, which is exactly what I want it to do. So now I'm going to hit yes again. I'm going to go down to create linear locks. I'm going to do yes. And now it should play as before, but now it's sliced. <laughs> See, it didn't quite play as before because what I need to do is now I've got this is chopped up into two slices. So that slice slows right down because it's got the, um, where do I go? Because it's got the trig on it, uh, the parameter lock, sorry. But this one does not. So I'm going to bring that down to 12 as well. I could bring it down even further actually. Maybe we should experiment with like six and see how that goes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's keep it like that. So now what I want to do um, is <laughs> I kind of want to keep fucking with it in various different ways. Um, but it's tricky to know exactly what to do. One thing that's quite annoying is that you, in this menu you can't parameter lock any of this stuff. It would be nice to go between um, rate, uh, pitch and time stretch because the pitch effect you get, you can do like reverse um, kind of sounds. You can do like record sort of stop sounds and scratch kind of sounds. Um, I can't do that with this when it's on time stretch, but I still want that little bit at the end to be time stretched. So there's nothing I can really do about that other than just turn it off. Why don't we just turn it off and see what it sounds like? Cause I can always just turn it back on. It's obviously non-destructive. <laughs> lol <laughs> doesn't quite work but the thing is it's on 12 so what if we brought it like up to say 32 which is exactly half so it'd be half the pitch hopefully that would mean it would like you know be still in some kind of tuning um and we can bring this one up to 16 and we'll see how that sounds i'm sorry for having to repeat these whole this whole fucking uh section again but uh, this is kind of the process. You know, I'm actually, I actually think that sounds pretty cool and it is going to allow me to do more stuff. So let's keep it like that. <coughs> um, let's go back earlier and let's see what happens when we do certain things like completely reverse this slice and maybe if we go to the next page um, take this slice and bring it entirely down to 12 uh, minus 12 octaves sorry not octaves semitones um, and why don't we go to say this one and let's put rate a uh, retrig sorry to oof, five bring this to speed down quite a bit um, and I'm also going to put a trig here sorry and I'm going to make this trig be a different timing up here so that, that one's a lower time uh, it's faster time this one's a, a lengthier time and I'm going to go to sl uh, the slide trig page and I'm going to put four slide trigs in there and basically what that means is is that this trig uh, the parameter locks on it will slide from there to there um, you'll you'll hear the the result hopefully it will work all right um, so what I want to do <coughs> I should put that back up to five and uh, what do I want to do here that's right, I need to go to the amp page. 
and I want to make the amp page be less than one trig or less than one um, step of time. We'll make the release really low as well. And let's just sort of give this a play. <laughs> So <laughs> that sounds a bit weird. Let's keep going. Let's keep adding more. Let's keep doing some shit to this. Um, so I feel like this retrig thing didn't quite work out how I wanted. So I'm going to make it even faster. And I'm going to make this one faster again as well. <clears throat> and I'm going to make this more, more retrigs because the faster it is, the more you have to have in there so that it kind of really has a lot to go through if it's going very fast, if that makes sense. Um, I'm sure it doesn't make sense, but anyway. Um, and let's let's uh, copy this trig and paste it twice in there. And this one, let's... Um, let's kind of do the same here. Only this one, I want to do the same thing I did with the other one, make it really short. Copy, paste, paste. Let's try this. So I think that sounds pretty sick. Um, I like that. So, but there, there is more, there is just more we can do. Um, and, but at this point, maybe it would be a good idea to move on to the next sample, um, which is this one. I'm just gonna mute that one real quick so you can hear this. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn per track on rather than normal because it should just be set to that by default or there should be a way to set it by default because uh, that's how I always use it. Um, and that just means I can make this 16 and the other one 64. Um, just going to set that to 64 and we're all good. And now on this one I'm going to So I might have to change this one's original tempo to the same as this one because I did take them from the obviously from the same song. So it's 21.75 or 121.75. I'm gonna set the same to this one. 121. There it is. Let's see how this goes. So I set that to 16, but I'm actually, I've decided that I want it to be <laughs> uh, longer. Let's, let's go with 32 to begin with and see where we go. Cause I want to pitch this now. So. Well 
So one thing I'm going to do on this track is I got filter and we got delay as the defaults are set, and I'm going to select lo-fi. On this one, I'm going to select comb filter. And we're gonna get some radical weird sounds out of this. So let's just, as a demonstration of the sound, I'm just gonna keep this playing and, and fuck with it for a little bit. So one thing I'm going to do, oh, I just bashed the microphone. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this track <clears throat> a neighbor, which means I can have more effects on this one. Uh, I got extra access to these extra two effects. Uh, so I'm going to add a compressor because I just I just need it. It just needs to happen. Um, let's bring this back up to like halfway. Let's give it a little bit of boost. Also find it acts as a bit of a limiter, as I sort of already described. Um, let's go with So, that's the lo-fi settings, uh, you got some really cool stuff in there. Um, I feel like the scenes is the best place to, to utilize a lot of that stuff, um, at least in this track. <clears throat> the comb filter is really cool because, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, but in this case, I feel like uh, it's going to lend itself to pitching certain things. Um, so I'll sort of demonstrate just on the fly real quick what I mean by that. So you hear what it's doing there, you know, it's kind of like, it's almost turning the vocal or the, the sample into like a pitched, uh, I don't know, you can sort of like make it into a pad almost, you know, it gives it these harmonic overtones, which is really nice. So now we've got that set, um, probably we'll do some more messing around with the comb filter later in terms of the scenes, but let's, let's set up some scenes here. Um, let's do this in a way which I often like to set up scenes. So the first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to bring the sample rate reduction up. Let's say to, let's just do it all the way, right? Um, let's bring up the bit rate just a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So that's that first one. I'm going to copy that scene. And I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it over here. So now it's the same thing when we go between these two. But on this one, I'm going to add to it. So now I'm going to bring in the depth of I don't really, amplitude modulation depth. I think that's what that means. And um, I'm going to bring this right up. And that way, I'm bringing some distortion as well. And I'm going to copy this one. And I'm, I'm not even going to listen to it. I'm just going to keep keep going. Um, <clears throat> let me go over here. We've got all that stuff. But this time I'm going to turn this back down again. I'm going to turn it up more. I'm going to give it more bit rate reduction. A bit more distortion. Maybe turn some of the sample rate down. So we're just evolving between these. 
I'll copy that again. I'll bring it over here and I'll paste it. Um, and let's just let's just keep doing things, you know. Just keep changing things. Um, um, and maybe let's do a little bit more with the comb filter. So let's bring in some more feedback, and then I'll copy that. Um, and I'll bring it over here. And I'll paste it. And what else can we do? Um, <clears throat> I guess I could put the feedback into negative, and um, I could bring this up to what? What's it on normally? G3 or is it G, G sharp? All right, let's let's see how we go. Let's go back to this. Pretty cool, right? Very cool. So let's copy that one, let's paste it over there, and let's keep going. So we've got a filter on this next track. Remember, we've got a neighbor track set up. So on this one, um, let's do some filtering. Let's just bring up the bass, um, bring up heaps of heaps of resonance. Um, what else can we do? Well, that'll probably do for the time being. Maybe I'll bring up the gain a little bit on this. And let's just see how that sounds. <laughs> It's not that noticeable because the comb filter is still completely nuts. So let's, let's change some things here. Let's uh, get rid of the feedback. Let's get rid of that. And maybe let's, let's bring down some of the intensity of that. Let's just get rid of the distortion altogether. Let's bring this down quite a bit. Maybe that down a little bit. Let's bring, just bring everything down a little bit. <laughs> See, that's, that's way cooler. Um, let's just bring up that bass just a tiny bit more. And then let's copy this again. Let's paste it over here. And let's do more. Um, so let's bring the width right down. Um, get some sort of uh, bandpass filter effects. And let's go to the LFO. Let's bring up some LFO. So maybe let's just do half. Half is good space. And that's always the default of the LFO is always set to pitch. And I don't usually pitch the samples using the LFO, but in this case I might do it, but I'm gonna change the speed. I'm gonna bring this up to like 64. And um, you can't edit, you can't parameter lock any of this uh, menu. <clears throat> you have to parameter lock this one. So then I'm gonna just bring that right up. So we should get an interesting effect. And let's just try that. <laughs> So it is an interesting effect, but there's too much filtering to make it noticeable. So let's bring the bass down, maybe bring some of that down. Let's go back to this screen and maybe bring the sample rate reduction down, bring out the bit rate entirely, bring that down quite a bit, and let's just see what we got. <laughs> See, I, I mean, I feel like that's pretty much the desired result, right? That sounds fucking ace. Uh, let's copy that. Let's paste it in here. What else can we do? Um, I know what we can do. We can go to our original uh, piece that we did over here because we haven't had add any scenes to this at all. And one thing I'm just going to do is just bring the rate right down to like just to plus one. Um, and that's going to give us some really weird results. But remember that we've still got parameter locks on some of these uh, trigs, which means that they might override the scenes. Um, but let's let's just un unmute, uh, let's unmute that one and mute that one. And let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Alright, 
So <laughs> one is maybe a little bit extreme. Let's let's bring it up to say like seven or something. That's cool. That's very cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is see what these two sound like together without any effects on them whatsoever. Uh, let's just see how they go. Fuck, I forgot to unmute the neighbor track, which means nothing plays. <laughs> So I think that that's complete chaos, but I like it. Um, <clears throat> and we've got this other track up here as well, which let's just mute those two and see what these two sound like together. <laughs> Ah, you see the thing is, is when I change the per track length, I forgot to change this back to 64. So let's see have to get rid of these trigs because they auto copy. All right, let's see how that goes. <laughs> Now, um, I don't like that because it completely uh, covers up all of the changes that I made on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this track, copy that track. I'm going to paste it here. So all of that track is mirrored up here now, but on this track, I'm going to clear it and then I'm going to turn it into a neighbor and that way we get access to more effects again. I'm just going to clear these pages. That's a really handy tip, by the way, clear, uh, holding down the effect. You can do copy, clear, paste. Uh, it's just, it's life-saving. Um, so now it's going to sound like this. So that's exactly how it sounded before because we haven't done anything with these extra effects, but now is the time to do some wacky stuff with these extra effects. Um, I'm just going to use these same scenes. Um, I'm not going to unmute the other track to see what's going on, how they're going to interact. I'm just going to go with it. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to save uh, this part. That way, if I fuck anything up, I can reload it and it'll be okay. Uh, I should have saved it earlier anyway. <clears throat> so what I'm going to, the main thing I'm going to do here is some filtering. So first thing I'm going to do high pass filtering and bring up some of that resonance. Uh, then I'm going to go over this one. Um, and let's just bring the width down, bring up some of the resonance again. Um, and the cool thing about this is now I've got, because this one is sliced up. Um, Oh, actually, no, because it's on this second track. So it's even better in a way because it means I can add my own trigs. Hmm, is that going to work? I mean, it will work, but not in the way I want. Because uh, anyway, I'm just talking to myself, obviously. But let's uh, let's just keep going with this because I don't want to waste time. Um, and let's go back to this one. And let's maybe, what else can we do? Let's go to LFO and let's... Let's bring the LFO depth right up and let's replace it with, instead of being pitch, oh, this is, fuck. This is on the, oh man. Okay, that's not gonna work. Um, oh no, it will work, yeah. So let's let's make it amp volume. Let's turn it to square and let's turn this right up. Um, and that way, we should get something interesting. Let's let's have a listen.
Interestingly, that did absolutely nothing and I'm not entirely sure why. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove them and I'm gonna go back to the original sample track rather than the neighbor track and I'm gonna mirror the same things that I did there here. I feel like it will actually work this time. So let's go in here, let's change this to amp volume. Let's change it to square. Hmm, yeah, that one up to 64. Now, let's, let's... You see? Fuck, sorry. You see? Now it works. Um, <clears throat> let's go back over here. And now let's go to another LFO and let's bring that one right up. And this one is going to be... I'm going to leave it on pitch. Um, but I'm going to make it real fast. So hopefully you don't really hear the pitch changes. Um, On this one, I've just basically completely re reversed it, so every single sample is reversed, um, which still sounds good because it's sliced up, um, and because like, I feel like if you're going to do that, you have to you have to make sure your sample is sliced. Up. You can do it um, without it being sliced, and you can get some really cool like slow down effects. But every time you bring back um, the back the slider back across to the original value, you end up with situations where the sample is then being sped up again, and that's in a different place. So you end up with really weird. Um, timing of certain things if it's a long sample but if it's chopped up it will always just go back to like the next trig will start it again and you get better uh, results that way um, that's my opinion on that matter um, so I'm gonna I feel like that might be enough um, and I'm gonna go back to the beginning of all of these I'm gonna press play I'm gonna sweep through all of the uh, scenes that we've set up here and we're gonna see what that sounds like And the other thing, cool thing I can do is just, well, you'll see. <laughs> That's very fun. It's a really cool live uh, thing to do is just immediately switching between the scenes without sliding between them. You get some nice stuttery effects. There's, there's just heaps of things you can do with that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that video right where it is for today. And maybe I'll do a part, to, well, maybe. I will do a part two in which I get the Digitact involved and we can make a beat for this. Maybe we can make a bass line up here with the um, System 1M. And uh, yeah, we can go from there, have a, have a bit of a series of me remixing this track. Maybe we'll get some other machines involved as well, like the Mono Machine or something like that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe and tell me what you think. And I'll see you later.